Hello, fellow truth seekers. I hope that you're all doing well. I hope that you're all handling the energies as well as you can. Um, I know personally, uh, I've been hit hard with some of these energies. And, you know, I just want to reassure you that this is, for anybody else who's getting hit hard by it, to lean into it, okay? This is purging and it's healing ourselves. I can physically feel like an opening up inside of myself. And it's healing humanity. I have uh, a subscriber and I hope that I say your name correctly. I was trying to get it out of you today. <laughs> But um, I looked it up online, and hopefully I say it right, Michaela. Um, Michaela uh, had said, and she's um, she watches the Pisces readings, and she had said that she had learned that by healing herself, that she was healing the collective and even the universe because we are all connected. And I thought that was really beautiful and I had not really thought about that that way. So just to, you know, do the inner work. This is um, a good time to do that inner work, to do that inner healing. And it's actually a bit of a responsibility as um, light workers, as truth seekers, whatever it is that you identify with or, you, you know, as long if you're just on the spiritual path, right? So, this moon, just wanted to um, get that out of the way because there are more energies coming in with this moon. Um, so, let's talk about the good stuff first, okay? It's going to be a really powerful manifestation moon, okay? So, and remember that we don't have to be happy, happy, happy in order to manifest. That's great if we if we can. But whatever you're feeling, right, lean into it. If you get triggered and you're you're really sad that day, think about what you want, right? Use that energy to think about, you know, what you want. Not about what went wrong necessarily. I mean you want to get down to the bottom of what went wrong, right? What triggered you? But what do you want? You know, whatever it is that triggered you, you know, what would make it right? Yeah? So just really use that energy. Know that it, that you can manifest as long as we're, we've got powerful energies, okay? If you can get out and in and, and nature and really, you know, pay homage to nature, that is going, you know, the earth, um, the moon, the flowers that are blooming, just whatever it is, you know, there's a lot of, I've seen a lot of birds that are kind of getting together and doing their little dances and everything, and it's really cute. And, <laughs> you know, get into that stuff, enjoy it, right? Stay in the moment, whatever it is, okay? Spirit wants us to really know that to embrace every bit of life, right? I think about the never-ending story and the quest that he goes on, and, you know, going through the muck and the mire and getting stuck in the quick, you know, all of these things are just like what we're going through, right? This is our quest right now. So kind of try to see it that way. Try to embrace the moments, what is to be learned from them and use this power at this time. Even these heavy energies that are in, just, you know, ride them, right? Because this is gonna be, you know, I was talking about last month about the waves of energy that are coming through. Well, this one is gonna be a tidal wave, right? <laughs> um, Pisces got um, Tool Anima for their song. And um, I don't, you know, it wasn't to be taken literally, but I think it was just getting Pisces ready because Pisces, you know, they are, and it's Scorpio as well. Um, they had a pretty 
heavy reading and it was really um both of them they're they're going to be transmuting a lot of those energies right both of them go deep they're water signs they're emotional they're and um they're going to be transmuting a lot of these energies for the collective and it was really you know and all of us are really but it just came through strongly in those two readings so prepare <laughs> Prepare for this tidal wave of energy, okay? So this is what's going on. All right. Uh, the moon is at 18 degrees of Libra, it, which is the moon in Tarot, right? <clears throat> so it's really taking on all those aspects of the moon. There are going to be, you know, this is going to be a time of confusion. There are probably going to be secrets being revealed, things being revealed at this time. And, but, you know, it's still shrouded in secrecy and we're not going to know what the truth is, right? You know, who's telling the truth? That kind of thing. Um, but it's also the second supermoon of three, a series of three. This is the second one, and it's the one that's going to be the closest to the Earth. It is the moon of 2020. It is going to be the closest to Earth of all the, the full moons, all right, <clears throat> of 2020. Good thing is, this is about balance, justice, relationships, love, right? This is happening in Libra, and it's like all this energy is getting pointed at Libra. And um, so whatever it is, you know, think about what it's bringing in. Think about what we want, right? Libra, this Libra energy. Because <clears throat> we want truth. We want justice, right? Those are Libra qualities. We want love, beautiful, equal, give and take love, right? We all want that. And this is a time where we can manifest it. But we have just hours ahead of this supermoon. We have uh, Uranus squaring Mars. Uranus is in Taurus. Mars is in Aquarius. This is that future energy. You know, Uranus and, Mar and, and uh, Aquarius are both about the future. And Mars, and um, you know, is just helping with that. Taurus is pretty, you know, it's, it's that grounded energy. So, you know, this all by itself is associated with earthquakes and such. So we could possibly actually see something like that happen, especially with the supermoon in play, right? Um, then we have the moon and the sun are in a T-square with Jupiter and Pluto, just days before Jupiter and Pluto had uh, their conjunction, right? Which is helping expand all of this. We are going to see, you know, a peak in th this coronavirus business, but that's when the peak, right? So things will start to balance out, right? But we are going to see all of this, you know, our personal transformations um, and the, the collective transformations getting expanded. And that just, you know, happened a few days before this. So this is squaring that, this full moon, the t sun and the moon are squaring it. So, you know, it's making this T-square. So, you know, that's, that's pretty big all in itself, right? <laughs> so, yeah, there's some, there's some heavy energies, but this is also very magical energy. Um, the, and yeah, we're going to be manifesting with it for sure. It came through strong in today's messages. So, um, yeah, just make sure that you're in love with life, right? Find it again. If you're not, find the magic again. Look for it and find it because it's such a wonderful, beautiful time we're living in. And as scary as all this is, it's going to lead to something really magnificent, okay? 
I promise. You're going to see. All right. Let's see what the cards have to say. Hello, my beautiful Virgos. I hope that you are all doing well. So my name is Chrissyanna. I will be performing this reading for you today regarding the full moon in Libra. Oh, that came out quickly. Hmm. Listening. You all got this. You all got this for your... Uh, <laughs> for your April... And it was very sensual in nature. Um, or it could be. It didn't have to be. But um, I definitely got a sensual feeling about it. So before I get into this any further, this is for Sun, Moon, Rising, and Jupiter. As my readings do tend to be of a more spiritual nature. Um... Please remember, we can all have masculine and feminine energies. You can show up as any person, place, or thing <laughs> in this reading. So, as I was getting ready, as I was centering and doing my prayer, um, I was very grounded, very grounded, had no problem. In fact, it was like I was so connected on both sides, so balanced on it both sides. Like typically when I pull the energy up from the earth, one side will move quicker than the other. It was it, both together very, very balanced as the energy moved up my legs and then moved up through the first three chakras really quickly with ease really strong and then when it hit my heart chakra it was like hitting a brick wall so <laughs> you guys have your set your heart chakra kind of closed off or some of you do it doesn't have to be everybody um but yeah you you're kind of closing yourself off to feeling from your heart chakra which is very important um but it seems like the way to, and then as I kept moving up, it was kind of um, a heavy heaviness, right? And in the upper chakras, you don't necessarily want to feel this heaviness. It was kind of really difficult. But apparently this listening, this is your throat chakra, but your throat chakra is, uh, it starts below your neck, like at the clavicle and goes up through your neck and it includes all your jaw and your ears as well so that is what you are supposed to be focusing on working on and through listening we will be opening the heart chakra as well or allowing yourself to open up as well so listening to your <clears throat> inner voice as well Listening for messages, listening to music, try chanting, right? All of these things. Um, if this resonates with you, I would advise watching the April reading. It was very interesting. Oh, that came out quick. So, you got Joseph Buys. You also contribute to humanity's Gesamtkunstwerk. I'm getting better at saying that. <laughs> Make sure your rabies shots are up to date. Symbolism is just one ambulance ride away. So this is that closed off feeling, right? You um, are closing off because you feel uh, attacked in some way. You feel vulnerable. You're so at the bottom, we have Hildegard von Bingen, and I suppose, I, I don't know for sure. She is, this is music, and it says, Become like a feather on the breath of God. Gain wisdom through the study of the unknown. The soul is not in the body. The body is in the soul. So, might want to look her up part of your listening but my intention with this 
artist is that you study their work. You all have got this card before too. This had to do with uh, getting an animal. <laughs> Wonder if any of you all got one and you're, you're thankful now because um, you have a buddy, right? Um, But yeah, my intention with pulling this card is that you study the artist, their work, their life, etc. And that it has something to teach you, right? Of course, this is completely up to you. You don't have to. I never force anything. Okay, we're going to do that right there. All right. Get some cards for you from the Wild Unknown Archetypes. <clears throat> I'm getting, you know, the escape route is within. So, Joseph Buiz, he, <clears throat> this, um, you could also contribute to Humanities Gesamtkunstwerk, that is, you know, it, 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 like there's this collective work of art, right, and that we all contribute to it is what he felt. And we do, right, as a collective. And I feel like this is asking you to, you know, come out of your shell, connect with the collective. Maybe, hmm, the stone. Yeah, and you're being weighed down, you know, you're very connected. But it's it's almost too much so. Oh, and I've, I'm seeing a, a sail. The father. Hmm. Control. Okay, I feel like that's probably going to be it. Okay. The mask is underneath. We have the creator and the kiss in reverse. Okay. And, you know, this kiss energy is here. So don't be, you know, this, all of this is going to tell us how to come into this energy and look how it's like getting lighter and I don't, we'll, we'll find out about this the kiss here <laughs> it's interesting to me that this mask like it's this balance between these two, the mask, you know, this, it, it's your protection right now, I'm feeling. And you've got to remove the cloak, remove the mask, disengage yourself from the stone that, yes, it's making you feel grounded and secure and in control, but it's blocking you from the kiss. It's blocking you from this connection, right? The heart chakra is blocked. But this creator card right here is what bridges the gap, right? And we see this, that's, ah, uh, and I grabbed the hunter this time. So, you know, you're hunting, you're hunting your inspiration
you're hunting, you're, you know, and this, the creator, once again, and it's connected to this father energy, is you're in control still. And when you feel that connection, that's when you start feeling out of control. That's why you're blocking it. Because love makes you feel out of control. I'm getting the sense that, you know, where I saw this as a cell, I see this as something that's entering, that has entered your, like, force field, right? And <clears throat> it's this. <laughs> and when you felt, you know, you felt like you were being invaded by this this feeling and that's why we have this you know square you know you circle yourself this is like your auric field and then you put this box around it this like you know barrier and it's like you keep on adding layers of this barrier but it's already in right you're you're trying to stave it off and not allow it in but it's already in it's already growing and as much as you might try to stop it, right? I mean, the creator, this expansive energy, this uh, manifest manifesting energy is bringing it into being, whether you want it to or not. And, you know, but of course, if we ignore something long enough, right? If we block it long enough, it will go away. But it's just going to cause a lot of frustration and emptiness. You know, I feel like this side of the father feels very empty, this very controlling side, right? This is the side that allows, that allows this creative energy because there are two sides to the father, which is like the emperor energy, just like there are two sides to the mother, right? But you're kind of sitting on this side of the fence right now, trying to block it, trying to control it. And there is, you know, it's just gonna make you feel empty need to accept it in, right? Don't be afraid of opening the heart. The heart is uh, very resilient if we allow it to. By closing it off, that's when we cause problems for ourselves. Because this, you know, so do uh, the listening, right? Really sit still and just listen. Practice, you know, do some explorations into music, right? See what, what do you hear? Do you hear a phrase over and over again? Do you hear somebody's name over and over again? That kind of thing. All right, where do we want to go? Where do we want to go? I do, I want to go to the Morgan Greer for this. For Virgo, please. And with the father and the creator, there's like, you know, I get this sense of, you know, like God or the creator or whatever it is that you, the universe, spirit guides, whatever you resonate with, playing a part in this, in this bringing you and someone else together. It's already entered your field. It really has. <laughs> You're kind of fighting a losing battle right now that's just making you feel closed off. 
Yeah. I'm going to do one more shuffle here. Five of Pentacles energy. Feeling left out in the cold. Feeling alone. And I'm sure that, you know, there's a lot of this that is actually pretty healthy, right? <laughs> Just a certain amount of this uh, uh, keeping undercover. The, oh, with the mask. Hmm, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Because you all got the big reading about... Uh, the virus. I forgot about that. I was trying to stay away from it. And it was like, Virgo was like, no, I'm, we're hearing it. Come on. <laughs> All right. Let's see what you got for Virgo, please. Full moon in Libra. What does Virgo need to know? Full moon in Libra. Okay. And this four of swords came over here and landed right across this. And it's like, you know, rest easy. And like, we've got the sun at the bottom. Everything is going to be all right. And this is a transformative time. I'm going to do it like this. Take him over here. Okay, so we've got two fives. Oh, this is 67 to 22. Oh, we've got three twos right here and then 60. And then we've got, an, uh, I don't know why I said another one. That's weird. We've got a 24 here, which breaks down to... Oh, I forgot to show you this one. This is the inner child. Hmm. And the sun here. Ooh, with the ace of rods underneath. So, yeah, there's, uh, you know, underneath all this is, you know, this is playfulness. This is that heart chakra, right? Get in touch with that inner child, guys. Um, that more playful side, right? You need this change in perspective with the hanged man being here. Yeah, you're feeling, you know, there's lots of mental turmoil, mental conflict here. But you're going to win the battle, right? With the Five of Swords, it's, you know, it can be about self-sabotage, but then it's followed by the Ace of Pentacles. So there is this new start to this new opportunity. And it's right in the center here, right? This is this creator energy. This is this manifestation that's coming in. And it's coming in while you rest, while you have this change in perspective. While you become enlightened. Because this sun with the Ace of Rods here, and that's followed by the Queen of Cups. enlightenment and this is uh and after you emerge from this this period we have lots of sunshine and <laughs> good energy and not that it's not you know it, there aren't going to be difficulties along the way but this is going to be a new start for you you know there's lots of ups and downs um on the spiritual path But if we keep moving forward, if we're not afraid of the darkness, if we're not afraid of exposing ourselves, if we listen, really wonderful things will be given to us. We will become enlightened. We will become more and more brave as we move forward. I promise. <laughs> All right, so we are going to get a piece of art for you. We're going to get closing guidance. 
And then we'll take a look at the underlying energies all together and see what kind of story that tells. All right. For Virgo, please. Looking for closing guidance for Virgo. We're gonna go right here. Do lift. Young man at his window, wow. That is really like, you know, I just feel like this is a real a portrait of you at this time. We see a person that is alone, right? Oh my gosh, and I didn't even think about these cloaks being, and even the nun has, we see the nun twice. There's healing going on here, guys. Um, and you might feel, ooh, see, yep. I didn't even mean, I was looking through my camera and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't realize I did She's like, scooch this guy over to the side and replace me. All right. I feel that, you know, uh, we might have some, some German people or people from German descent with, uh, because I think this is a German name and this guy is German. But, uh, yeah, that is so curious that we have these cloaked individuals and in, you know, different ways, right? He, he's mimic. it's like these two sides to the same coin. They're even both fives. And we have more, this is wild, more red here with this yellow and then more yellow here with the red. And this is that grounded energy, right? The solar plexus. And then this is the throat chakra. All this blue coming in. Finding your voice. Listening. That is pretty wild. Even the inner child is, is cloaked. Oh, wow. Underneath the inner child is communication then universal light. Um, I just say, and the reason that I'm going on about this is that you are connected to spirit. You're just, you're closing it off at this time for some reason. And the, the key to it all is this listening, okay? So just kind of experiment what resonates with you, the sound, right? But yeah, I'm just seeing this as like you during this time period, reflecting, looking out over the world and what do you want to bring into it, right? Because you are creating, you are manifesting, whether you know it or not, right? So we got to make sure we're careful of, not, I hate saying that. As soon as I said it, I was like, I felt like I was getting slapped on the hand. <laughs> Even when you're in like a funk, you know, do some exploring, right? What do you want to bring in? If you're, you know, closing yourself off to love, why? Get to the bottom of it, right? You have time to do this. Look at these self-sabotaging uh, thoughts and behaviors that you have, right? How can we create a new start for you and then let it integrate right just wait for the inspiration do some listening okay just try not to let yourself get caught up in those allow the healing to happen right this is like you and then this is you. This is, you know, after doing some of this reflecting, you know, he's got a little, smi little smile on his face right here. There's a little bit of victory here. Okay. So, yeah. That's what I'm seeing there. Who would have thought a guy in a window would mean so much? <laughs> All right. So, I am getting closing guidance from the fairies. Oh, 
haven't used the fairies in a couple readings and I, I miss them when I don't use them. <laughs> Love me some fairies. These fairies. These are like old world energy. Beautiful, beautiful energy. Can y'all feel that? Just as like I pulled them out, it looks like it brought in some magic. I mean, not that there's not magic here, but fairy magic is just a little bit different. Now, you, you guys, I know it sounds a little bit crazy, especially to a Virgo. Now, I've got a Capricorn moon, all right? I've got my Venus in, is in Taurus. i got plenty of Earth energy. <laughs> and that's what these are, you know? And I was kind of closed off. I'm a Gemini, too. So, um, I was closed off to it. But this deck right here changed my mind. All right. What messages do you have for Virgo, please? Looking for closing guidance for Virgo. Closing guidance for Virgo. We have the dark lady underneath, and that she's very high priestessy, but it says in the book that she leads us through dark times, all right? So we've got a collective of pixies as your final guidance. We're going to read a bit from the book. It's a beautifully written book, too, if you guys are at all interested in doing your own tarot and such. I highly recommend this. If you're called to it at all, like, you know, the fairies aren't for everybody. <laughs> but I felt the need to say this. And anything that's on here, I have links down below if you're interested. All right. So, it says duty willingness, joyful participation, virtue. And you know, I just got this feeling that this is connected to this card, right? You also contribute to humanity's Gesamtkunstwerk because we're all working together during this time and it really is true. So there's like you're part of this manifestation, right? We're all individually manifesting during this time. We're manifesting this, you know, and it's, of course, it's going to be, you know, it's not going to, like, we're going to come out of this and everything is going to be as it should be. You know, there's, there's work to be done. <clears throat> and that's what this talks about. But we are creating this new world. All right. So it says, a pixie's got to do what a pixie's got to do. And one of the things a pixie has to go do is to dance. <laughs> it has to be done so that the flowers will grow and fruit. The grass will do its photosynthesis thing. The trees will put down their roots properly. And other processes will proceed in their proper time, at their proper pace. The pressure of the pixie's energetic, little etheric feet may even be what helps to keep the world turning at the right speed. At least they claim it does. <clears throat> Approaching these tasks with lightheartedness is, they say, essential. It lends virtue and the sense of potency to their actions. Otherwise, their feet would come down too heavily and stunt the growth of things instead of enhancing it. And I had to stop there and say, talking about that um, heaviness that I felt, you know, definitely in the heart and then in the upper chakras as I moved through them. So there's this need to be light, right? Now, I feel like that's also this um, movement from the five of pentacles to the five of uh, swords, which is air, right? That's this moving. And the five is the throat chakra. That's the fifth chakra. Interesting. 
So we're having to move that energy up and get light and that this listening is going to help with that. Okay. So it says, okay, I'm going to go on down here. Pixies, Pixies could treat their duty as something boring or oppressive, but they choose to take joy in doing it and doing it well. Are you faced with duties? Like the old saying goes, a merry heart makes light work. We have a choice about how we do anything. We can make a game of it and do it happily. We can take an attitude that makes it demanding and oppressive. We can choose to regard it as boring and dull. When we choose the first attitude, the results have a different feeling, a different energy, than the results of the other two. Anyone and everything that comes in contact with the results of that work feels the difference and is affected differently by it, whether they notice it or not. So here is another of those places where we make the world better or worse and do the same to ourselves simultaneously. Beautiful. Okay. So now let's take a look at the underlying energies. And that was a 48, a 12, breaking down to a 3, which is growth. 20, another 2, 19, 10, the mask, 61, breaking down to a 7. Hildegard von Bingen. This is like the sun behind her head. I really feel like y'all should check that out. I'm going to check that out, actually. <laughs> the mask. And I have to say, with the mask, and I put the inner child right beside it, I feel like, you know, this adult us, right? And this adulting energy that we have um, come into, right? We would never dance or whistle while we work at this point, right? Well, maybe I would, but that's because I've been doing some inner child work. <laughs> at any rate, we've put on this mask, this adult mask. And really and truly, the inner child is, you know, such an essential part of us. And I mean, like, I think about a Buddhist monk, like the Dalai Lama. I mean, he's got this very kind of childlike, innocent aspect to him, right? And the sun comes up to me as well. <clears throat> you know, so all of, there's a lot of this lightheartedness that's coming into um, play here. And the darkness is what is the mask. So get in touch with your inner child, right? Get in touch with this, this more primal aspect of ourself, right? The inner child, there are you know, primal needs in the inner child. And one of them is just to have fun, right? And that is going to bring brightness to your tasks the dark lady, you know, that's trusting that inner voice. That's going through these darker times. And I mean, embracing the darkness to a certain extent, right? Because we, we can't escape the darkness. It's always with us, right? That's part of this path is learning how to move through, you know, embrace anything that comes our way, any challenges, any darkness, any, you know, just really getting into all those primal aspects of ourself that we try to mask, you know, because we're so evolved. Explore. Explore my Virgos. <laughs> and then, oh, become like a feather on the breath of God. 
once again, that lightness, right, is being expressed. Gain wisdom through the study of the unknown. The unknown is, you know, this darkness, right? And the soul is not in the body. The body is in the soul. And that is here as well, right? You're this little cell here. <clears throat> but you've made yourself too f heavy. You need to... Let yourself lighten. Let yourself lighten. All of this that's happening right now, it's... <clears throat> I don't necessarily want to say an illusion, but it's still, you know, the... We don't have to get weighed down by it. We don't have to be scared of it. There is light at the end of the tunnel, and there's actually light right here, right now. And they're asking you to find it, <clears throat> right? Find that, that balance and open your heart. Don't be afraid. Beautiful things will come in. All right. All right, Virgo, I hope that that was helpful. I hope it resonated. If so, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, share. And until next time, much love.